Deep from the studios of WFC3, this is the time, this is the place, and you are in now in monkey business. Your one-stop shop for everything geeky, and since anything can be geeky, if you love it enough, you never know what you are going to get. This is your host, IMC. This week, we're going to be talking more about the Flower City Comic Con. Coming up this weekend, we will be discussing the events, and stick around for our question of the week. Yeah, it's like only a couple of days away. (laughs) <laughs> this is I'm not yet to panic moment. This is this is where Dan and, and Brian and Tanya, they're like in panic moment. D, are you in panic zone yet? Uh yeah, I am there. I start panicking usually about two minutes after the gate opens. That's that's when I start panicking. <laughs> so, cause, no, it's cause just it's logistics like, at this point, trying to make sure, you know, right. everything is going smoothly. Exactly. Chris is the guy who's coming the bag. in when they're supposed to come in and people are supposed to be where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when that starts actually happening and then, like, the event begins, I'm usually, yeah. I'm, like, blisteringly calm a half an hour before the gate opens. I get people together. I start rallying everybody. I start getting, you know, folks can kind of get them riled up. I do the rah-rah speech. And then I'm like, okay, I feel very satisfied with myself. I pat myself on the shoulder for being a great leader. And then the gate opens. I'm like, oh, God, what am I doing? <laughs> so I don't know what to do next. Where am I going? Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about Flower City Comic Con today. We did a little bit last week. We talked about our VIPs. We talked about some guests. We talked about the artists. Today, we're going to be talking about attractions. What can you, the listener, the ticket holder, what can you expect when you walk through the doors of the Floriano Rochester Riverside Convention Center? And there are a lot of things. There is a lot of stuff going on. (laughs) We really busted our butts to make sure that there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, On with me today, my bouncing boy, Ian. Hello. I, I can't call him baby anymore because he's 6'3", 250. <laughs> he's Mama. Mama. Also on the mics with us today is the Ray. I was chosen by Zordon to be here. Yeah, okay. It's morphin' time. And radio legend Billy DeTori. I'm eating cheese. He's... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cheese Billy. you got going on over there, Billy? So, so what Parmesan. Kind of... Parmesan. On the phone with us, a fellow executive board member, Deanna Schulmerich. Hey, D. Hey, guys. Producer extraordinaire, Sherry Alberski is here. Hello. Other producer extraordinaire, Christopher Spink. Hello. And one of the mad monkeys herself, Monkey Girl. Hello, Elana. Hi. How you doing, sweetie? Good. Now, now, have you competed yet as Roller Derby Queen? I, I have already had my first match. Okay. How'd it go? Uh, we lost, but you, we played hard. That's all that matters. Play hard. Keep keep working on it, and one of these days, your guys are going to be like, you know, nationally renowned. I mean, hey, I'm and... just happy that the scrapes are almost gone from other people's <laughs> you know velcro what? on their pads. What was that, Cher? Monk only had one penalty. Oh, the entire game. That not was bad. Impressive. What'd you screw up, kid? Oh God, I don't even know. Did you get called for holding <laughs> one of the rest. <laughs> oh, I would have. <laughs> did now? Do you spend like time in the penalty box or something like that? She did. You get sit, put in the she sin bin, did. as they say in hockey. Yep. So. Go sit in the box, feel shame. The box of I do not like the box of shame. I just thought about something. No, what no, did you no. Think when about, you're in the right? box, you're just like, okay, okay. What am I done? What am I done? What am I done? I want to be out now. <laughs> and they're only 30-second penalties, so they don't have a lot of time to really think about what they've done. Oh, okay. So it's just basically catch your breath and then get your butt out there again. Pretty, Pretty much. much. To get run over. <laughs> Ray, what do you got? Yep, and- I, I, just, I just thought about, you know... In the beginning of the thing of the intro for Power Rangers, they say we need teenagers with attitude. Do you think they ever think about, hey, let's go pick up a roller derby girl? Is it Power Ranger roller derby? Yeah, think about that. Okay, get off the mic, Ray. Chris, Chris, second penalty. I'm turning second this penalty. mic off. <laughs> okay. All right, Chris, you, you were saying something? It. Chris, did you have something? You'll time it. Oh, okay. Pop it, I'll do the paperwork. Okay. Chris, you had something you were going to say? Yeah. Um, Sherry and I actually managed. Uh, Sherry managed the box, and I was one of the box timers mm-hmm. for uh, you know for the roller derby match. And you can't talk to the people, so it's not like we can sit there and say you're a bad girl. <laughs> you got to have you got to have somebody dressed in the uh, like a, like the gray nun robes and just stand behind them. shame, shame, <laughs> shame, holding a ruler. Shame. No, that's my Game of Thrones su- shout out. I'm going to suggest that to Wifta. There you go. Who's Wifta? Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Wait Raise mics going back on. Raise mics going back on. <laughs> Wait until you can. Hey, stop talking, though. Anyway. 
Um, all right. So we got our introductions. We got our uh, rough. Set. We're going to jump into the business at hand, and then we're going to jump into the content at hand. So quick, quick sponsor shout outs. This list should be familiar for our regular listeners. But for those of you who are just coming to us for the first time, we have been sponsored by Na- Knox. Craft Cocktails and Comfort Food, located at the Village Gate. Selena's Mexican Restaurant, also at the Village Gate. There's Great Escape Room, the Sherlock Holmes-themed escape adventure out of the University Avenue building there. Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey, bringing us Caitlin Blackwood, the Young Amelia Pond. Pop Rock Comics, Caffeine and Culture on East Avenue. Arch Telecom, featuring Sprint and Redfin Realty. Make sure you patronize these businesses because they have been very supportive of our monkey business. Uh, Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a membership platform that makes it easy for you to support Monkey Business and the Flower City Comic Con. Check us out at patreon.com, FC3ROC. All membership levels will include access to the Patreon-only blog, plus tons of great perks at all levels, including early podcast, Twitch, and FC3 information. Uh, And then now we're going to talk about Apple Podcast. You want to help others find the show? Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. This is the single easiest way to support the show and encourage others to listen. Every review will be thanked on the air, and any questions will be answered. We want this to be a conversation, so please send your questions. In addition to Apple Podcasts, you can find us on Google Play, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Stitcher. Is there a place you find your podcast but can't find FC3 Monkey Business? Let us know, and we'll take steps to see if we can fix that. And please follow us on Twitter. At FC3 MB Podcast. If you do, say hi. We love it when you say hi because we will say hi back. So, all right. When we come back, we're going to take a quick, quick break. When we come back, there is a monstrous amount of stuff going on this weekend at the Flower City Comic Con. And we're going to give you a, a glimpse of what you can expect the moment you walk through those doors at the convention center. I want to go to break with a little piece of comedy for Monk from Nate Abshire, talking about his roller derby girlfriend who's still scared of spiders. Nice. I feel like dating a girl is a lot like a choose-your-own-adventure book. (laughs) Except on every page, your girlfriend is crazy. (laughs) Oh, you did something wrong? Well, if you apologize, turn to page 242. (laughs) Nope, still crazy. (laughs) I do have a girlfriend... And she's awesome. She's a real tough girl. She does roller derby. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. She's a roller girl, right? But she's still scared of all the normal girl stuff. And it's weird. Like, she's still scared of spiders. She's still scared of the dark. She's still scared of our basement, where I keep her. (laughs) I shouldn't be that surprised, though. Like, because it is dark and full of spiders. You know? After a certain point, it's like, really? Scared of the dark? You're 14. Be a big girl. (laughs) And that is just a joke. She's not 14. She's been down there a really long time. It just goes from bad to worse. In addition to our VIP guests and the vendor floor, you can expect at the Flower City Comic Con to have tons of access to panels, discussions, and events and attractions. We are going to, we have a whole list of just about everything we got, but we're only going to talk about a bit of it. And that's probably going to be an hour conversation in and of itself. There is a lot of stuff going on. um, Because we've always felt that a convention should be more than just. A vendor show. It should be more than just come and buy stuff, get your autographs, and go on. There should be things to do. There should be people to see. There should be people to talk to and things to have some fun with. It should be a party. Uh, and I I think we did good in the first two years. Mm-hmm. This excels beyond anything we did in the first two years by, by an order of magnitude at this point. Um, right off the bat, I want to talk about on Friday night, June 8th, we are going to have our launch party, and that's going to be at the convention center as well, right in the concession area, uh, and it's going to be from 8 to 11. Kick off the convention weekend with the FC3 staff. We will be partying at the convention center uh, to get the weekend started right. We will have a DJ. 
We're going to have finger flutes. They're going to be included. It can be a cash bar will be available for your imbibing pleasure. You can also pick up your badges and show off your cosplay. This is a separately ticketed event. It's going to be $15. But for that $15, you'll get the finger food, you get the cosplay, you have access to the bar, you'll have access to the staff, and maybe some familiar faces might pop up once in a while. It, you can't promise anything because you never like know. Like Tanya Metris? Like Tanya Metris might oh. pop up. She's not with us. It's two weeks in a row that woman has not been in studio. Will Chris Frank be there? Chris Frank will definitely be there. Oh. He'll be the guy in the corner with the paper bag going, oh, my God. Oh, God, I can't believe this is happening. All right. So, yeah, start start the weekend off right with the launch party on Friday, $15 to get in, and you'll have access to a whole ton of stuff. There's going to be a lot going on. Who wants? Is there anything that, you know, looking over the list, is there anything anybody want to talk about in the particular right off the bat? Well, I, w- I want to start with something I had a lot of fun with last year, okay. which was the uh, just the fan discussions in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. There's fan discussions. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, DC Comics and Movies, Doctor Who, uh, Star Trek uh, movies and mm-hmm. TV shows, Marvel, all that. I, I was in a DC discussion last year. Just I wasn't one of the the hosts i was just sitting in the audience mm-hmm. and it got yes. heated, heated oh yeah, i heard it got heated in yeah. a fun that way heated. Rate itself. i was there that was awesome right <laughs> yeah that was that that's was something awesome. that sticks out in my mind from last year was just how passionate yes. these dc fans were on how yeah. to fix the movie universe how the comics could be better love it so if you like dc and marvel and harry potter i'm sure you can find some like uh like people to have just fun chats with and and then there's gonna be a lot of fan you will be able to find our schedule uh online on our website fc3rock.com fc3roc.com and there's a tab right at the top says at the con you put your happy little cursor on at the con and a whole bunch of things will pop up code of conduct cosplay and schedule schedule will have access to everything we've got on Par or on tap for the weekend, so make sure that you look that up. So you I'm can trying to remember who the poor bastard up. was that was trying to uh, moderate the discussion. That was Andy year. Mertzke. Was it? Yeah, Andy. Andy, yeah. Andy had uh, he was controlling panel room two. He's going to be moderating panel room two again this year. And okay. I told him, I said, you got to be ready. He goes, I'm bringing my, I'm bringing pads. Yeah. He's going to have hockey pads for DC, the DC Universe convention or a, con- a conversation I, again. What's that? Uh, as much as I, I, I really don't get me wrong. I'm very excited for the Q for the Q and A mm-hmm. for uh, Catherine Sutherland. Yeah. Um, also very excited for that Q and A with uh, Josh Herdman. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's gonna be a lot of fun. Not only like mentioned uh, last week, mm-hmm. is he going to be? It's his first convention in the com- United States. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love that. I I I love the fact that it's a Harry Potter guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge Harry Potter. He's person. nerding out. It's awesome. You know, I, you know. I, when I was little, mm-hmm. I thought I was Gryffindor, and then I grew up, and I realized, wow, I'm more of this one. Took like, the, you're a Slytherin. Took the test, and I, it just so happened I was. A Everybody Slytherin. wants to be a Gryffindor, and then winds up being something else. Well, I wanted. I took the Pottermore test yeah. to be a Gryffindor. I wanted to be one when I was younger, only because you know. I want to be you, one. Well, you kind of want to be the hero sometimes. I want to be a Hufflepuff. You ne- they never get in trouble. That's they're it. Just, <laughs> they're hard workers. They just get in there. I call baby. What? What do you want to be? Ravenclaw. Love Luna Lovegood. Ravenclaw. Love Ravenclaw. She's one of those people that I want us to get our hands on at some point. I took the Pottermore baby, test. I came out as a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I ended up being I, Gryffindor. I, there you I, go. I call it the Batman effect. Mm-hmm. And you know, you, you, you're little and you want to be Batman or you want to be Gryffindor. And then you grow up, you realize you're more of. The Joker. <laughs> You're more than the Joker. Yeah. I've always, even in Star Trek, I want to be one of the thousands of people just on the Enterprise that you never see, never. Yeah, but they're just busting their butt to make sure things work. Yeah. I want to be go, crewman number six. I don't want to go down to a planet. <laughs> I don't want to do Billy? nothing. Yes. You know, Billy. Billy? Yes. Go ahead, Cher. Billy, we have a book for you then. What, what is it? I like books. There's a book called Red Shirt by John Scalzi. Okay. Who we have interviewed on this podcast. Right. No, we haven't. We haven't interviewed Scalzi yet? No. That's someone Jim Hines. Hines. Oh, okay. Jim Hines. Jim Hines. I'm, I'm getting my but, Johns and Jims mixed up. Yes. But Jimmy this Jones. is about a group of people, lower level, on a ship similar and about their experiences. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Oh, my gosh. The audio book is done by Will Wheaton. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. You know, Sherry, I remember you. You've told me about that one. Now, here's the thing. Billy, you can live... 
your desire of being mm. a crewman on the Enterprise because we are going to have the Starship Bridge Simulators That's on right. site for our third year. I spent some time in that last year. Oh, it's so much fun. And, and just like my dream, I just stood in the back. I <laughs> <laughs> just enjoyed watching. <laughs> I, okay. I've never actually Next had a chance to that, play it, I but I'm always sitting in it. the one that shoots things. There you go. <laughs> but we're going to have our, our bridge, Starship Bridge cool. Simulator. It's going to be in its perennial spot right at the end in the in the aqueduct rooms uh, at the very end of the building on the first floor, right by the video gaming room and the board gaming room. So it's And there will be signage aplenty, so everybody will be able to see where everything is. Um on, And right next door to the Starship Bridge Simulator is going to be the Great Escape Room, of Rochester is going to be putting on an actual escape room. So that's kind of cool. We're looking forward to that. So there's going to be like activities, Sweetness. things to do. Um, now, Sherry, as someone, you've gone to a bunch of conventions recently because mm-hmm. you're always talking about, I met this person here. and I th- well, What are you looking forward to the most out of this list or uh, some of the stuff? Well, I have to say that the things that I'm most looking forward to is um, there's two panels. And one event that I'm really looking forward to. Yes. Um, I'm really looking forward to the Dungeons and Dragons and Education and Therapy. I was just looking at that right up. That just sounds so amazing. I mean, as you guys know, um, we work with adults and children with disabilities. And I know with some of some of the people I work with, this would be such a great thing for them. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And I love collaborative storytelling. It's such a great thing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that panel. Well, D&D has gone mainstream. Then that, so it's, it's more of a broader acceptance of it. I mean, we talked about that with Jeremy Crawford. And, and so yeah. to be able to put a focus on it here in our own backyard is kind of cool. I'm looking forward to that. I think it's cool that you guys, yeah. uh, you guys bring up D&D because um, there's actually a Twitch channel that takes uh, playing that, and they make different uh, shows mm-hmm. uh, based on th- that format and everything. They have uh, par- uh, parks and some uh, par- parcels, I think it's called. It's it's a it's a puppet puppet kind of show. And they play oh, okay. they play it. They have uh, a Star Wars one. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a Power Rangers one that just ended uh, a few weeks ago, and they have multiple shows where where they play D and D but it's for the franchise that they are in and a lot of a lot of the uh licensings that they do they actually talk to Saban and and uh and Disney to, to allow them to, to make brand new characters and brand new worlds for well, that's cool for uh their game. Now I see um this is gonna be close to Monk's heart and, and Sherry as well and, and Chris. Uh, but we're going to be having the Rock City Roller Derby demonstrations again. The girls will be back to do their thing. Yay both on Saturday and Yay. Sunday. <laughs> Monk, just go in there and nail someone. Just seriously, just come, <laughs> just come up and just. No, you know, no I'm just, not bringing my gear to do that. That's just, that's just wrong. I am not part of their team. I'm not doing that to them. Love tap. She says that to you guys as she's sitting there thinking about should I really do that? I think I'd be <laughs> like the, the wrestler on the back going heel. She'll no, see no, somebody no. going I by and she'll be like, I can take them. On my laptop. I love them. Um, so we're going to have that. Uh, we're also going to have live action role play. So kind of going along with the D&D thing that we were just talking about a moment ago, we're going to have one of the local Amped Guard uh, organizations come in and do a, uh, a demonstration of, of LARP, of live action role play. And they're going to have a table so they can be around to answer questions in case anybody's interested. Um, I'm awesome. seeing a Princess Tea Party on stage one, a kid-friendly meetup with Princess uh, and Queen cosplayers from different movies and shows. Um, I'm a pretty princess. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you're fabulous. Yeah, you I'm sh- fab. Just gotta shave your beard a little bit more. I think. Um, haiku dating game, school idols. We're gonna be doing a lot more with anime and cosplay this year. I'm seeing. That's kind of. I'm excited about that. Fitting your and fitting your cosplay to you. That's a panel room three uh, thing on Saturday. Uh, podcasting. We're gonna be actually doing a podcast about podcasting at the, the convention. <laughs> It's like Inception. And it's going to be... It Podception. Is gonna, uh, we're gonna, and the podcast is going to be interviewing another podcast. Yes, I have to get in touch <laughs> with those guys to make sure that we're still on, on, on board for all of that stuff. But uh, it looks like we're going to be chatting with Dan and Ryan of the official Game Stitch podcast as they, uh, they're they going to talk us through creating a podcast. So we're going to be giving you an opportunity to do a podcasting 101 while recording a podcast. So it's, just, it's Podception. That's all there is to it. We're yeah. going to put a podcast in a podcast like within a podcast. We were re- when our podcast was reviewed on a podcast. Oh, yeah, that's right. That happened recently. We got reviewed. That we, was exciting. We did? 
Yeah, we did. That this this young lady um she's based out of Australia, but she's French. Mm-hmm. And um and their organization basically is a podcast where they review other podcasts. So they they that's like helping network and branch out and get people attracted to other podcasts. And she took the time to do a 12 minute spot on us. That is amazing. We have to And she and dug she us. She really liked us. She really liked us. I thought that What's was her fantastic. Name? Um, her really? name was Elizabeth. What was the name of the organization, Cher? Um, give me one second. Of I course, can... you would ask me that. Of course, I would, because may... that's my job is to put people on may the spot. May I ask? Uh, yeah. Well, for, for cosplayers, what, what do said... we have? What, what do we have new for? I will talk about cosplay in just a moment. Let's finish up awesome this bit, sauce. and then we will move on. Okay. One thing she said was listening to us is like. You know, sitting around talking to your friends. Yeah. Your nerdiest friends. I thought that was great. When I heard her make that comment, I was like, aw. <laughs> okay. It was, her name is Elizabeth. Yes. And she's with Podcast Collected. Collected, and, as in past tense. And, yes. And that podcast about uh, monkey business was the first actual podcast she did as yeah. a podcast. Because all of them beforehand have been written out. Yeah, they were Tumblr write-ups. I found I found this uh, this page, this podcast collected on Tumblr, and um, it said submit your podcast for review. So mm-hmm. I said okay. So I did it, and it was months ago when we first started the um, FC3 Monkey Business Tumblr. Oh wow! Okay. And she decided that you know what, rather than just do it as a write-up on Tumblr, let's give them a wider audience. I'm going to start doing these as podcasts, and she started with us. So, yay. That's outstanding. That what platform was this? Bloody awesome. Well, yeah, what platform was that on? Uh, Podbean. 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 Yeah. Not Beam as in Sunbeam, but Podbean as in, you know. Um, B-E-A-N. Green yeah. beans. Yeah. Green beans. Magic beans. That was, But that was very cool. We have to send them a thank you, like, basket, like, full of, like, autographs and... And uh, bubble gum. And a picture Blueberry of Blueberry muffins. muffins. Blueberry muffins. I, I don't think she's going to be able to read my autograph. Okay. <laughs> we can send him a picture of Chris, too. Yeah. Which Chris? Both of you guys in one picture. In one picture. This Hugging. is Chris Squared. Hugging. Yes. Oh, we, we've got a nice Shades one of us uh, in, in studio. It nice. Could be Chrisception. Chrisception. <laughs> okay, that's getting a little ridiculous. Mm. All right, so what are some of the other things we've got going on right now? Okay, okay. so you said, uh, you, you, you asked me which ones I was really looking forward to. Yes. So the other thing that I'm super, super looking forward to, and it's brand new to FC3 this year, is Silk. I am so looking forward to the concert. Oh, we're so good. We're going to have a whole music program going on through the weekend. It's, gonna, it's amazing. Uh, we're going to have the, the, the geek band Glitch is coming back to do another uh, another set. And then we're going to have, who is it? It's Mary, Mistri- Mary Mischief and... Mary Mischief, Via Bella, Via Bella. and Ukla the Mock. Ukla the Mock. That's a big name. Go. Yeah, Ukla the Mock's been around for a while. They're uh, out of Buffalo, but they travel all over the country. And Rand Bellavia from Ukla the Mock, uh, he and his wife Erin are Via Bella. So okay. they're brand new, and they have a brand new album. Really looking forward to hearing their stuff. So we're going to have music. We're going to have games. We're going to have uh, a- attractions and activities. We're going to have the cosplay thing that Ray was mentioning earlier. We're going to have cosplay contests, cosplay, uh, you know, talking about building cosplay, sewing classes. Uh, we're going to do anime uh, discussions. We've got the fandom discussions. What, what am I missing? I know there's we've got a ton of stuff going on. What, Actually, there, there's one that something on the list that just sort of <laughs> caught my eye because it's one of the things I had a bad experience with once at another convention. Mm-hmm. There's something co- called How to Spot Bootlegs. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Tell me about that because one of my very first conventions I ever went to was a Star Trek convention here in Rochester. I was still in high school. And in the dealer room, they had on VHS tape uh, old Batman serials from the uh, 40s. Oh, wow. Or from the, you know, like the old ones they used to show in movie mm-hmm. theaters, you know, in chapters. But he only had part one, didn't have the, the uh, videotape for part two. But if I gave him the money and gave him my name and address, they'd mail it to me. I never got never it. Never called, and oh, they wow. stopped taking my calls. And <coughs> so I don't like bootleggers now. Yeah, they, seriously. Um, but no, we got people who are going to be coming on and, and on Saturday at eleven o'clock uh, on stage two. Uh, they're going to be support you know support the actual creators of the shows and comics you love. This panel will teach you how to spot bootleg merchandise, both in dealers' rooms 
and online. So that's kind of it's cool. It's going to be a presentation that will be available to, to people. Uh, what else do we got? We got we're having a showing of the Fifth Element, which I just caught my eye just now. Yeah, I'm excited. About that's that. Saturday. I love that movie. Saturday at seven o'clock. Oh, it's one of my favorites of all time too. <laughs> Saturday at seven o'clock, we're going to be doing that in panel room one. So we're going to do a viewing of the Fifth Element. Um, I've never actually seen that movie the full way. So. Oh, oh you're my gonna god! Have to you get just a chance. put a yeah. dagger through my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else do we got? The Girl Scouts are going to be uh, earning their comic badges on stage one. They're going to be doing a participation thing. Uh, we're going to have live wrestling in the foyer. We're going to have a K-pop party in panel room two on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Do you like K-pop? Do you want to make some friends? Come join us at our panel K-pop party. Can I ask a silly BTS. question? Yeah. What's K-pop? K-pop, I was hoping you were not going to ask me that question. But in essence, what it is, is it's, it's anime pop music. It's okay. big Korean in Japan. Pop music. Korean pop music. Excuse me. Yeah. I gave him the look already. Don't worry. And J pop. <laughs> okay. And uh, so this is going to be a kind of doing, this is going to be a big thing for the fans of that particular uh, genre. That's the, will give a chance to, to do things there. Um, what do we got here? Unless they're playing baby metal, I don't care. True. <laughs> uh, Rocky Horror Bingo will be Saturday I was night. I'm going to bring that up, Chris. I'm excited about the fact that, you know, in the past, our convention ended at 7 o'clock. Right. This year, we're going right till 10 o'clock. Absolutely. We have so much <laughs> night programming, that it's, and it's different. It's, it's across all genres. It's going to be a lot of fun. So people definitely need to check out the, the schedule and come out and stay past 7 o'clock. You don't have to stay till 10, but hang out with us. Mm-hmm. We'll all be there hanging out, talking, checking out some of the stuff that's, you know, at – after seven and it's a lot of interesting stuff the rocky horror bingo is going to be fabulous i'm looking forward to that too that's going to be fun i'm, I'm so looking forward to it. i saw some of the, what they did at the minicon this past uh winter and i just I'm, I'm there's so much to go i'm like oh my god i'm gonna <laughs> there's too much i'm gonna be torn in too many different directions um what is another one journey to your story panel room three on sunday join usa today best-selling authors nathan squires and megan j parker as they discuss storytelling fundamentals and techniques at polishing your individual writing voice. So we even have the like a lot of stuff going on towards education. So we're going to teach you things, you know, how, not just yeah. how to spot bootlegs, but how to find your voice as a writer and, and, and join the creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Rand Falavia from Ookla the Mock is doing an arrangement for solo performance workshop. Okay. Oh, that's for, cool. For musicians. Uh-huh. So there's going to be like a jam session going on? Um, his write-up says, not sure your song is interesting enough, getting tired of strumming the same pattern for every song, wondering how best to arrange Bohemian Rhapsody for a solo <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> join, join Ukul the Mock, Ren, uh, Ran Balavia, as he discusses best practices for arrangements. In this workshop for beginning to intermediate guitarists, you will learn what each hand is responsible for, the difference between a riff and a lick, and why you should or shouldn't care about the distinction between bar power, sustained, and diminished chords. I, I you know just went cross eyed. What do you need from Ukulele the Mock? I need a picture of Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and I need them to sign it for me. Oh, wow. Okay. Just oh. because of their Arthur Curry song. There you go. There you go. Now, one thing that uh, may get heated, I see the Star Wars 501, uh, 501st, uh-huh. is that how you pronounce it, uh, discussion, yeah. Star Wars discussion with Solo just coming out this weekend. Yeah, I saw I've, it. I've talked to a few people who have seen it, and mm-hmm. it's gotten mixed reviews among the Star Wars folks that I've spoken with. I haven't yeah, seen it yet. Gets mixed reviews mixed among reviews. the Star Wars. Yeah, but this one yeah. seems this even more divided. I, I got two comments on the Solo movie because I did see it with Tanya okay. and, and our friend Sean the other night. Um, and we'll do a podcast where we'll talk right. more about it later down the road. Um, I will I will lead in with my my decl- disclaimer that I always use for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It is such part of the the interknitted, interwoven global consciousness acro- around the world. Everybody's got a view of what Star Wars means to them. With that being said, there is no possible way to make a perfect Star Wars movie anymore. It's just not possible because there's so many different opinions going into it. There's so many different expectations from so many different angles. That people are always going to say, oh, they didn't do it the way I wanted them to. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be somebody to say that. With that being said, my opinion, for what that's worth, I loved it. Oh, good. It was a great movie. It was not It was not Infinity War. It, mm-hmm. it, it did not have um, some huge emotional depth in terms of, you know, well, what are the villains and stuff like that, stuff we've talked about in the past. 
and it kind of but it, it did shed some light on some of the, the the great legends that we've grown up on, like you know the Kessel Run and Twelve Parsecs. Well, it mm-hmm. features the Kessel Run, so you see how he does it. You see you see it happen, um, and you see how he meets Lando, and you see how he kind of interacts with things, and how Han Solo gets set upon the the path that he goes on. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Good. I thought it was a great movie. Excellent. That's it didn't good rip movie. out your soul, which is nice. It did not rip out your soul. So and and Chewbacca. Now that there's a new actor in the suit, since Peter Mayhew is is he's too old right. to do it at this point, you see a different actor. So there's the same, the same kind of charisma from from the Chewbacca character, mm-hmm. but now you see a bigger uh, a bigger range of athleticism, and oh, a little okay. more range of motion. Uh, the guy they've got in the suit is just as big as Peter Peter Mayhew, but he was an athlete on top of everything else. Mm-hmm. This guy moves and just as hairy and just as hairy. <laughs> well, you, you see that you see Chewie moving through a fight mm-hmm. scene, and it's just like. I don't remember, you know, Peter Mayhew doing that. It was it was more like Peter just, you know, Peter Mayhew's Chewbacca kind of hung in the background, used the crossbow, and just blasted the hell out of everything and roared a lot. This Chewbacca was getting into it, and that was a lot of fun to watch. Hey, Chris, I think there's one panel on Sunday we all need to, to check out. What's that? Join the new 80s revolution. I was just <laughs> looking at that. <laughs> 12, 12, 45. I graduated oh from God. high school in 83. We, we could all go back and have a, you know a, a, a memorabilia and you know reminiscent time for that hour. Absolutely. Um, again, there's a YouTube show called The New Eighties <coughs> Revolution, and they talk about ra- uh, radical topics associated with nostalgia and pop culture of the eighties. They cover the toys, the TV shows, the movies, the music, the fashion. The fashion was horrible. Mm-hmm. Food and many more uh, things, all through the eyes of the nineteen eighties. Um, and they have toy and memorabilia collections from the best decade of all time. <laughs> I can't wait for that. That's going to be very interesting to see. I would like you to speak for yourself, by the way, on fashion. I managed to get all the way through the 80s without anything truly embarrassing. I Because, I, I, okay. you know, the great, it was great. You know, I had my high school years in, in the 80s, so I had the school uniform. So I managed to stay away from a lot of it, but I've always been a T-shirt Chris. and jeans kind of see, guy. me too. Yes, I Sherry. T-shirt and jeans. Um, I just have one thing to say uh-huh. about that. I've seen the pictures. What pictures have you seen of, of the 80s? <laughs> From me. Mullet. I, I, it was not a true mullet, by the way. And, it and, was such a mullet. And I only wait had it for about wait, a year wait, and a half. I'm going to defend them because we went to a Catholic school and you couldn't have a mullet. Your, head, your hair had to be your, at your collar. Yep. If it was longer than the collar, you got it. Uh, I, I grew my hair out in, in uh, the fall of 88 just a little bit. And it looked like a mullet, but it really wasn't a true mullet because I didn't do, I didn't oh, do a little shaving of the sides. Good. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was not now I grow all my look. hair out. Ha-ha. For, for me, you know, like that open time, flame away from my head. I'm pretty sure it was the 80s yeah. when you had a mullet, and it just didn't look good. All right, so fandoms, activities, other things to see and do. We've got a long list. We've got Demon Productions are bringing the, re, the free zombie makeup uh, makeovers. Uh, the Rochester Ghostbusters will be there again, including an Ecto-1. We're going to have an okay. Ecto-1 on site. Uh, the Great Escape Room, as we've mentioned in the past. The Rebel Legion Echo Base will be on on uh, on hand, uh, along with the 501st. So that'll be interesting. The Rebels and the Imperials all intermixing together. Um, Sprinkles Maid Cafe will be coming in from RIT. So they'll be helping uh, kind of spread the cheer and move some stuff around and help the vendors out, support the vendor staff. Arlene's Costume Shop will be doing face painting. Uh, we are going to have a full room right next to panel room three is going to be our board gaming room. So there'll be a lot of tabletop gaming going on in there, uh, including Will card it be games. Will actual games so that people know how to play and they don't, don't have to learn in like an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's, something like that happened last time and it was just like, we have to learn an entire new game and for well, like an hour before we can even play this game. Well, that's part of the fun is figuring out, new, you know, being exposed to new stuff. And then if that's not if, if that doesn't fit you very well, then the next room over is going to be the video gaming room, complete with a VR rig supplied by Microsoft. So you know we're we're covering all the bases now, and and Chris knows about this one. Uh, you know, for all you cosplayers out there, uh, you know you've had to sometimes brave bathrooms and and hoarding through in, in small cramped bathrooms to change costumes or to fix costumes or something like that. We have. Paid attention to those complaints, and we're going to have a cosplay changing and repair room that on is site. Amazing, isn't that cool? That's amazing. I don't know of many conventions that do that. I l- listen. I've been to many myself, and I've been to a, 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 a good variety of them myself. And mm-hmm. honestly, 
I've never seen that. You never seen that? Not at all. So this is a first for some people. So that, that's cool. That's amazing. And well, I, we wanted the cosplayers to feel like they were a part of things. I mean, they're just as important as everybody else. Yeah. I mean, the costume comp- component of a convention is almost. It's almost right up there with the vendors and the panels and everything else. It's expected. So, exactly. So we want them to feel as comfortable as possible. So we don't want them to be stuck. You know, if you pop into the bathroom for a quick fix, okay, that's a fine thing. But, you know, we have the changing area. It's going to be in yeah. the back corner, um, you know, and we'll be able to direct you to that. It'll be over by the great escape room. And if you have any questions, ask any of the staff and they'll be able to tell you where that is. Um, but we want you guys to feel like, you know, you're a part of things. That, that's such it's little. It's the on. little things. Hold on. I'm going to be bringing a ton of stuff, so if anybody actually has real repairs, Mm -hmm. we can take care of them right there on site. They won't have to worry about, you know, having to leave and or go change completely. Um, I've got a multitude of skills that, you know, from leather working and sewing Mm -hmm. to painting, you know, if anybody needs anything, it'll probably be there. Cool deal. You are a true renaissance man, Chris. <laughs> he really you, is. You know yeah. how to do stuff. You swallow swords. You, <laughs> you play with fire. Yeah, you know. yeah. No, no, he no fire. I, There's I, a difference. He needs fire. All right, what was that, Ray? I understand that he said that he, he has a multitude of skills, but I thought he was going to say he has a mullet of skills to bring back. Oh, see, so, you know, <laughs> to turn him off again. Another 30 it. seconds. Yeah. 30, <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds for Ray. Nope. <laughs> Hey, Chris, one more panel we probably definitely want to talk about. Go ahead, D. Is uh, Sunday from 3 to 4, there's a feedback panel in panel oh, yeah. 3. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, definitely stop on by. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have All of us will be there. Questions, concerns, things we did right, things we did wrong. Yeah. We want to know what you think before you leave. Exactly. You know, that way it's fresh in your mind. It'll be fresh in our minds. You know, and any time, you know, it doesn't matter convention weekend, non-convention weekend. Anytime you have a question or concern about what we're doing, definitely get in touch with us. But, you know, this time, this way you'll be able to see us all face to face and, you know, we can, you know, address anything that you guys are mm-hmm. concerned about or just want to chat about in general. Yeah, little note, 27% less Ray on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean that's the thing. The, 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 since we got started on this adventure called the Flower City Comic Con and everything that came up because of it, you know, the big thing has always been we wanted to hear you, the the listener, you, the the ticket holder, you, the the patron. Um, we want to hear your your comments. We want you know what do you like, what do you don't like, what works best for you, what do you want to hear about, what you know because this is your show. This is this is why we do this is to entertain you and to give you an experience. Uh, that you did not have before um, or or to repeat a fun experience that you've had in the past but never thought you were going to get a chance to do again. So you are the most important aspect of the entire thing, my dear listener. And, and so everything we do is for you. And, and so we're going to give you that feedback panel at, towards the end of the, the show on Sunday and give you an opportunity to stop by. And, and if you can't make the panel, there's always a, a way to do it. You can talk to us on Facebook. You can send us a, a Patreon message. You can send us an Apple podcast message. You know, there's there's always going to be a way for you to feed back to us and let us know uh, what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to see going forward. Uh, because that's just that's why we do what we do. Bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. You know? While we're on the subject of everything for you guys, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to bring up. Uh, I mean, it's been posted on Facebook, it's on the website, um, but I wanted to really point out our um, uh, accommodations for people with special special needs policy that Absolutely. we just created, Yep. Um, which includes the quiet area for disabled persons with sensory issues, the elderly, expectant mothers, and parents with small infants. Um, we will have uh, some early seating for panels, so if you have issues with standing in line for panels, if you have issues with just needing to get out of the hustle and bustle and get in there, uh, present yourself early for panels, and we'll help you find seating. Um, and we also will have, this is something new, um, and I think it's pretty unique to us, is we have a couple of things, like we talked, we've been talking about the um, VIP meet and greets, um, where there's some people who would like to attend those but can't attend those by themselves for various reasons, um, but it might be a hardship to pay for two tickets. If you are someone who needs someone with you, we do have a limited number of uh, comp tickets for assistance of people uh, with various disabilities. So please uh, just 
ask if that's something that you need, and we will do everything we can in order to accommodate people as best we can. And if you don't see something while you're at the show, and you know, say something. You know, because that's we can't fix the problems we don't know about. So please let us know at all times. Keep in touch with us. Let us know, because. Uh, but there are a few. There are a few things I just want to mention. There's some things that we can't provide for, um, like those those free tickets for uh, for assistance are for entrance only. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't really do anything if the panel room's already filled up. It's not like we can kick people out. Um, and autograph sessions are always limited, so. Make arrangements ahead of time. And if you need a sign language interpreter, we really need to know that ahead of time yeah. to make sure that we can accommodate that. Right. And I know that we do have we have access to one, but we just can't randomly uh, bring them in. They, we, just, we have to plan ahead of time because it can be a little expensive. So, Ian, did you have something you wanted to add? I saw your hand go up, buddy. Oh, I know sign language. Oh, you know sign language? No. You just know how to flip your mother off when she's not looking. <laughs> That's great. There's yeah. a difference. It's okay. She's not going to listen. <laughs> There is one thing. I, You're uh, safe. Go ahead. Uh, the cosplay lip sync battle. Yeah. I saw that last year. Yeah. And that was very entertaining. Oh, so I'm looking I'm forward to it again this year. very yeah. excited to see it again. Yeah. That, there's going to be a lot of stuff. There's just so much stuff going on. I cannot believe what kind of programming we have put together this year. I'm just excited to see what, what how it all comes together. Um, you know, to see where we where we were mm-hmm. to see where we are now. Yeah, always it's evolving. So amazing. Always forward. Second floor. So, yeah. Second floor. The vendor floor is going to be on the second floor this year. We oh. we took out we've we're, everything is all the activities and panels and discussions uh, are on the first floor. And then we're shipping all of the vendors, artists and VIPs up to the second floor and we took Excellent. over half the room there. So it's we're going to be a two floor show now. And uh, and covering a lot more square footage. This is just it's exciting. It's just really exciting. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. When we come okay, back, one second. Oh, one, second. one thing. Okay, we're not going to take a quick break. Um, <laughs> for for Sweet. those people who didn't know, um, several vendors have been spotlighted on Facebook on the okay. entry page. Awesome. So that'll give people an idea of who's going to be there. So many people. Tons. It, lots and lots of vendors. It's going to be. Brian told really me that we have amazing. 130. Vendors, artists, exhibitors, and VIPs in that room on on Saturday and Sunday. And what's nice is, you know, we have some some close personal friends involved too. Yes. So that that always makes it great when you can bring friends in and just expand the whole circle of everyone. Exactly. Make it make it one big family, one Absolutely. big nerdy family. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to wrap this one up for the, the season. Oh, what does he mean by that? My husband is a comic book nerd, but very good looking. <laughs> And that is a great combination, right? Low self-esteem, but attractive. Get him! I say my uh, my husband is a big nerd, uh, yet I I had no idea to what extent. So this is what happened. I walked into the room, and he slammed down his laptop. Right? Slammed down, and then went like this. Hi! Is there anything more guilty than that? I was like, what are you looking at? He was like, nothing, nothing. Vacation options. <laughs> the next day when he is not there, but his laptop is there, I open it up and I've got my finger on the touchpad because I am going to find out what porn this guy is looking at. <laughs> but I, I froze. I froze because I was like, do I really want to know this? I know. And I know he, for sure he's not looking at pictures of girls that look like me. Right? <laughs> like he's not buying Jewy brunettes. <laughs> With upper thigh issues. <laughs> Who can stop himself from an answer that is one click away? No one. So I brought up the last website he had viewed and I started reading it because it was a website called MuggleCast. That is a website for Harry Potter enthusiasts. That is what that is. That is so scary. I was like, my problem isn't other women, it's other wizards. Like, what the f do I do with that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What's that? Ophira Eisenberg. Nice. Talking about a nerdy husband. Nice. That's awesome. That's a great problem to have. Um, so, 
This is usually when we come when we come back from the second break. We talk about our big events, but we've been doing that pretty much the entire podcast. This is the the event that's coming up. It's in a oh, couple say, of so days. Coming up on FC three twenty nineteen. I know we're going to start. I have to change the out cue soon. I'm going to have to start talking about June. I don't remember if it was like 13th and 14th of June of 2019. Don't confuse people. I can't confuse people yet. Let's get through this. We're going to get through this one. Are we recording? We're recording. Oh. We're yep. always recording. Your oh. life is being recorded, oh, Ian okay. Christopher. <laughs> Charles, I don't think you want to watch that Louis one. Frank, the fourth. What? I don't think you'd like to listen to that one. Yeah. Well, the Ian because... show starring Jim Carrey. Ian... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, we were just saying that here. Chris there. Jim Carrey after taco night, and you've got my son. Hey, Thank Chris, you. Before, before we leave, do you want to introduce everybody to Semi? I would love to. I, there's a couple of things we're going to do uh, here. First things first, I just want to remind people, if all of the stuff that we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks is interesting to you, get your tickets. You can go out on to fc3rock.com. You can get your tickets online. You can get your tickets at the door, but I will warn you, they're going to be a little pricier. Or you can go out to any of the following locations ahead of time to get your tickets in hand. First Print Comics. 13th Verse Comics, Blades for Life at Puff Palace, End Zone Collectibles, Rhinos Comics and Collectibles, Comic Book Heaven, All Heroes Comics, Comics Etc., Yankee Clipper House of Cards, Hammer Girl Anime, Wonderland Comics. Or, if you happen to know a member of the board of directors, ask us. We probably have a few paper tickets sitting in our pocket. We will not give them to you, I promise. Do you know the paper tickets sitting in your pocket? I Actually, they're in the car. So, (laughs) my, my pale green sedan that's rusted out along the left side that you can get through the trunk and crawl in through the back you can get the the tickets out of the center console <laughs> I'm, I'm lying through my teeth right now um so yes deanna mentioned simmy what is simmy simmy is a little monkey is a who not a what she's a who it is it is she is the official mascot and logo of the mighty monkey corporation she's just recently been released out into the public so she's going to start her adventures up this this spring and summer um, she is the brainchild of, of yours truly, and and uh, I'm going to screw up Candace's last name, but Candace did the actual artwork for it. Uh, your, your Candace girl. Dougherty. Yes, and she so she put the the ink to paper to make it happen for us, and so we now have an official mascot for the the parent company, uh, and her name is Simi Ann Henseltail, Simi <laughs> Ann, and. Um, that's a clever play on words, uh, Mr. I Frank. I thought so. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even I took it out. She's we've been fleshing out the character, and I, I joked around. I said her favorite go-to adult for advice when she goes on her little adventures will be her grandmother, Pre Henseltail. So yeah, play with it as you yeah, see fit. Uh, but I'm very excited because it's a fun. It's a fun graphic. It's a fun character. I can't wait to flesh it out a little bit more and, and see what kind of adventures this this little monkey goes on. So that's a thing that happened. Um, what else we got here? We got everyday heroes. We don't actually have any everyday heroes. I, I, you know what? I have an everyday hero. Uh, but not all heroes wear capes. Who is your hero? Do you know a fireman, a police officer, a nurse, an EMT, per- military personnel, teacher, or a librarian? Who is your personal hero? If so, please let us know all about that person, and we will give them a shout out on the air. Please send your nominations to fc 3 monkeybusiness at gmail.com. My hero is you guys, the people who every other week you slug away in the trenches at this podcast with me. Uh, for over almost two years now. It's like every year, well between a year and a half, two mm-hmm. years that we've been doing this together. Billy, we would not have been able to do this without you. Ah. You know, Sherry Absolutely. has kept us in line. Uh, Chris has helped. Monk has been great. Ray, Ian, Tanya, who's not here. Zach, Rob, Dolly, Ed. D. Every, D, you've been amazing. Wayne has even contributed yeah. over the years. Everybody who has sat in this studio and participated, all the folks who've been willing to have us interview them, Terry from Arlene's, um, Marco Shiro, uh, Jeremy Crawford, all these folks. Mm-hmm. The, you, you guys are my heroes because this would not have happened without you. Actually, I, mean, I, w- I was going to make the same sort of speech about all you guys for putting the convention on. Thank you. Which just watch, you know, I, I get to sit here and push buttons every couple <laughs> weeks, which is what I do in my life anyway. Right. You guys take time out of your regular jobs mm-hmm. and time with, you know, that you could be doing other things to put on this extravaganza once a year yeah and i watch all that you guys go through to do it and it's amazing so. that's appreciated and thank brother. you for uh, including me in your little oh, fun bunch we, we we wouldn't be able to do this without you at this <laughs> point so no this is good so you guys are my heroes and and i appreciate everything all of you do and my listeners to all of you guys listening out there you are my heroes as well for joining us on this crazy roller coaster of a ride this 
is uh, we're going to do our question of the week in a moment, but this is officially the end of season two of Monkey Business. We have come to the end of another. Will we be, be picked up for renewal? Uh, you know, whether we are or not, we're going to keep doing this anyway. Oh, okay. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to we're going to do the convention. We're going to plow through the convention and make that happen. And it's going to be where it all comes together. And then we're going to take a break. Uh, and we will be back probably at the end of June, early July. Uh, we will be back with all new episodes, a season three, new interviews, new topics, new things to talk about. Someone and yawning. Somebody <laughs> yawning in the background is going to be our new background music. And uh, and we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going, and we're going to keep doing these things. But for now, we're going to do a question of the week. And Actually, just, just the, the yawn just made me laugh. because <laughs> Years ago, uh-huh. I was working for the Brother Wee Show, and every Monday we had to interview du- Drew Bre- uh, not Drew Brees, Drew Bledsoe, okay. who at the time was the Buffalo Bills quarterback. Right, right, right. And we'd call him every Monday morning at like 7.45. Uh-huh. And in the middle of answering a question, one day he just went, Oh, <laughs> like just huge. And so every time I hear someone yawn on mic, I think I drew, drew blood. So. That's awesome. That oh. is awesome. Oh. <laughs> Season yeah. three of FC3 now yes, on NBC. We will be returning on June 27th. June 27th will be the beginning of season three of Monkey Business. Okay. So that's cool. That works. All right. So our question of the week. What book, movie, TV show, or album that always makes you feel better at when you're having a long day? One. So that one thing you go to that's your go-to thing when you're having a long, rough day, you go, you go to to watch or listen or read. With me, it's, it's baseball or just sports in general uh-huh. because I understand them without having to think too much about it. It's okay. just so ingrained. There you go. It's not a mental drain on me to watch a baseball game or a football game. I, I just know it's going on mm-hmm. without really putting too much uh, emphasis on it. The only that. variable is what happens yeah, from play to play. Exactly. So you don't really have to pay too much attention yeah. to that. D, I know what about, all the oh, rules and stuff. Yeah, exactly. D, mm-hmm. what about you? For me, it's I, I find my Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac Rumors album and I everything gets better. Nice. That's that's my go-to. Ray, I'm assuming Power Rangers, so we're not even going to ask you. To we're be gonna... completely honest, <laughs> no. No, what do you go? What's your go-to? <sighs> Waltzing Matilda. <laughs> honestly, he just wants to be Australian in his next life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know, honestly, because I'm still like. Do you draw? I do, but it's like. Uh, he seems so, like the I'm type so, who never needs to calm down. No, it's it's because he's always riled up. It's more of the fact that I'm still like kind of young, so it's like I don't really have that. Like th- that, go, thing, that ingrained thing, yeah, that a, routine. I would, I would say, ta- talking to you know mm-hmm. a certain person. But, oh, okay, yeah, but like, say, you good your shot at the Tory. Throw uh, on, yeah, talking to Tory, pretty much. Hi, Tory. <laughs> we love you, Tory. Um, <laughs> Sherry, how about you? What's your go-to? Um, there is a, a little band called Frenchie and the Punk. Okay, and they have an album called Happy Madness. And that's your go-to thing. So when you've had a long day, you're you're cranking up some happy madness. Oh, blasting in my car and singing along. Good deal. How about you, Mighty Monk? Tremendous amount of fun. Nice. And in person, too. Oh, yeah? So you've seen him play? That's cool. Monk, how about you, dear? We've seen him play many times, so. Uh, It's usually whatever my current favorite uh, Disney movie. Gotcha. Uh, Recently, it's been... Moana and sing. <laughs> uh, Ray and Ian both thrust their har- arms high up into the air as soon as you said Moana. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will. I will be. I will throw myself under the bus here. I have not seen Moana yet. I We're fixing that. I tonight. can't work for you anymore. That's okay. <laughs> I don't want you to work for me anymore. You're not going anywhere tonight. Yeah. You? No, I can, I'm not going anywhere tonight. So I'm going to go watch it tonight. Is yep. that what you're saying? Yep, pretty much. All right. Ian, Ray, you want to come? <laughs> Ian, keep me posted. Hello. <laughs> uh, Chris, how about you, sir? Oh God, um, I agree with Sherry about that album. Uh huh. Because that's always fun. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, when we've seen them, I've literally been out dancing their whole set. Nice. Can I ask the name of the hey. band in the album again? I'm going to write it down. I want to check this out. Happy Madness the by da- Frenchie and the Punk. Frenchie, Frenchie and the Punk. I'm writing it down. Happy Madness. Billy is writing it down as they're, we speak. They're kind of a steampunk cabaret. Type thing. They, they did a little bit more towards Renaissance stuff before when they were um, <laughs> Gypsy uh, Nomads. 
Just mm-hmm. Nomads. Oh, okay. And, oh, I remember uh, them. Okay. They, they've done Dragon Con. They do, um, what was the, the fairy one? Um, the, the, Con. the New York uh, Fairy. <laughs> fairy Festival. Fairy Festival. And, uh, um, they, they, they get around. Yeah. And they're big in the steampunk community right now. Very cool. Which is a community I want to know a little bit more about. I remember we've, we've had our, our chats about Same. that. Same. Yeah, I'm, with Eric. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you go to... You know, I, I like doing mindless games. Yeah. You know, I especially play uh, Bejeweled. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you get into music, uh, Faith No More and Manage Nails, always... He likes music to break stuff, too. Yeah, oh, I much. see. Ministry. So he's one step closer to the edge, and he's about to break. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> one of those things. Uh, yeah, just get, get all pumped up and get in a better mood. That's a thing. No, that's important. I, I can appreciate that a muchly. Um, Ian Christopher, I, how about you? I haven't been what? doing that much lately, and I probably need to. There you go. So let's get back to, the, back, my, back to the fundamentals, back folks. Back to the fundamentals. How about you, Ian you know, Christopher? And, what are some of the things you get into? Well, is, um, oh, wait, oh, never mind. The Dragon Ritual Drummer. We I, can't I really talk. Like Chris keeps drumming. going. <laughs> Ian Christopher, yeah, do, not Chris. <laughs> Chris. Chris is starting to relive all this great stuff. He's like, wait a minute. I've been neglecting this. I've been neglecting this. I've been neglecting this. Oh, my God. <laughs> when was the last time I had ice well, cream? There you go. I need an ice cream now. He's going to have an existential crisis. <laughs> Ian, Ian, milkshakes after this? Yes. All yes. Right. Very good. All right. So, Ian, it's your turn. It is funny you brought up this topic. Because? I have a playlist on my phone containing 16 songs, and the playlist is called Happy. Nice. <laughs> so, you have, so you have your playlist of YouTube videos that oh, you turn to. Oh, it is full of... Where did um, you get the playlist? Well, I... So if it started off... Um, your playlist. You ganked it off of me. I ganked some okay. of the songs off your and playlist. And then some of your own. And then I added songs oh. over the years. Nice. Uh, Secrets by One Republic, uh, Hero Tales opening. I've got uh, Natasha Bending's Benfield, uh, unri- Benfield uh-huh. Unwritten. Oh, that's Electric, a good song. Corpina, Shaggy Hope. Oh, very cool. Oh, if you ever want to hear a place. song about like going on an adventure and, and, and really indulging what, what, what you want to do in life, DuckTales. Duck yes, <laughs> Ducktales. The very Woo-hoo. first duck, the very first Ducktales theme song. Nice. The Hero I'm Tales opening is just a flashback. <laughs> Thank you, Bilbo. Um, now, as and as I'm for not me, the only one who keeps on going. Yeah. And as for me, I'm I'm used. To, I'm like, um, you know, like Chris in terms of just you know the mindless games. I but I it's it's not bejeweled for me. It's it's World of Warcraft still yes. after all these years. If, I, if I've had a particularly rough day, I'm just going to go home. I'm going to log in. I'm going to find a character and just go cruising across the countryside killing things. It's just one of those. Just, just get the XP and, and level up. Just keep going. You know, it's one of those things. But there are days. There are days, and, and my kids have picked up on this. If they get in the car and the radio is not on, there's nothing playing, and it's just silent in the car, don't talk to Dad. <laughs> just don't. Because if he wants silence... He is not going to want people talking to him either. <laughs> so just, don't make eye contact. Don't either. make eye contact. Just get in the car. Just get, <laughs> get in the car. Back away slowly. <laughs> There's no if back away. If you have my questions ride. for dad, ask him in your head. Dad, even, where are we going? Even oh, in their teen years. Say, don't worry about it. Even their teen years, my two kids will fight over who gets to sit in the front seat. Not anymore. Unless they hear the radio is not on, and then they fight over who gets to the back seat. See, <laughs> so. My mom had a system for that. Uh-huh. It was, okay, Siobhan's older. Siobhan gets the front seat. Siobhan leaves. Annie's older. Annie gets the front seat. Annie leaves. Uh-huh. I finally just got it. After, and, you're, and you're 20 at, what? 24. You're 24 and you finally get to sit in the front seat I of mom's car. I finally get to sit in the front seat. Yeah, but but have we, t- we taken you out of the booster seat yet, though? Yes. Okay. I'm finally out. <laughs> Ours is different. Who's taller? They get the front seat. Yeah, that doesn't I, always work in Jules' equation. I was yeah. always taller no matter what. It was more of... Oh, you're younger. Oh, you like to play with the radio too much. Send the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's enough of well, that. Then. Anybody that got any last question. licks for first season two is over with? Uh, can't wait for season three. It'll uh, come out on NBC, right? Yep. Uh, gotta wait next fall though. Yeah, Fox is gonna cancel us. So, but Netflix and NBC are picking us up. <laughs> that's a thing. You gotta wait a year before you can get actually get the season three. There you go. I love Talk you to guys. Logic. I really do. I love you guys. <laughs> 
And we'll be talking about Doctor Who. But anyway, this has been Monkey Business, a product of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you this freaking weekend at the Floriano Rochester Riverside Convention Center. Love us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Patronize us on Patreon, and I'll come up with a better out cue for Season 3 or something along those lines. Anyway, we love you guys. We can't wait to see you soon. Take care and have a great week. All together now. Dun, dun. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.